It's real early Sunday morning and I'm on my way down to the Des Moines Concours. I'm going to have my Sunbeam Tiger in the British Car Club booth there. And Ken is bringing his Austin Healey Sprite. This isn't one of the Sprites that we've featured before, so I'm going to have him tell you a little bit about it. In the video that I had you in before, I don't think we even talked about this car. You want to tell people a little bit about this one? Yeah, this was a barn find up in the hill country in Texas. A friend of mine, a, a work associate of mine had found it and uh, just delivered it to my house one day. It had been left up in Texas. Uh, they had uh, a small accident in the, in the right front, caved in the fender, and then we found that the generator was missing. So they had a, a right front accident and a generator problem parked it in the barn. And I got it in about 1986 or 1987, and I've moved it from Houston to North Carolina to Michigan to Oklahoma, and finally we got it back to Iowa, where Steve's shop is, and got it repainted and got it put together. So it's been since 1987 that we've been working on this project. It's Old English White, which was the original color for the Sprite, and it's done up just as an original car. I made it down to the show. Everyone's setting up right now. The Des Moines Concours is held in downtown Des Moines at the Sculpture Garden. The show surrounds the space and it is free to attend. This is the Ford Flathead VA class. Look at this Lincoln here. That's pretty cool. Another Lincoln. Nice woody wagon here. I'm gonna actually get a look at the V8 there. They're still setting up, so some of the cars may not be here yet, but this is our best chance of looking at the cars without too many people being here. This is the class that they're calling Exotics. Porsche, Aston Martin, this is a Shelby Super Snake. Those are pretty rare. Ferrari, De Tomaso Pantera. Another Ferrari there. We have a Bugatti Veyron down here. We've got a couple Ford GTs. are calling the American Muscle Class. So we're, we're probably with the car clubs. Probably. It's the first time I think they've featured so many muscle cars at the show. Being here in Iowa, they should have a pretty good stock of cars to choose from. This is a French judged show, so it's about how the car looks, uh, not necessarily how well it's been restored and if everything works. It's more of a how does this car make you feel sort of thing when they're judging these. This is the Space Age Collectibles class.
They have a bunch of classes that are based on the era of the car. Very cool Chrysler's right there. Got a Nos and Healy. There's no bumpers on it. Here we go, some retractable hard tops. Now we're moving into the Atomic Age collectibles. The BMW 300. It's a Packard you don't see every day. There's a Crosley wagon. That's pretty cool. Kaiser. This is the antique class. There's a Brewster. Very cool. Got a Hudson. No Cadillac right there. So if this were an auction, Buick. Uh, probably closer to There's Sears behind these guys. Right. Now, I watch the auctions quite a 1910. Bit. It's got a tiller instead of a steering wheel. And a Gobron. Cute little thing. This is the preservation class. These are supposed to be original unrestored cars. The paint on that Thunderbird looks very nice. It does look like it's been repainted, but maybe it hasn't. Oldsmobile, you can tell that's original paint. Pontiac. The Plymouth. Not very many older cars in this class this year. This Hudson looks like it's the oldest one and does look very original. We've got an Oldsmobile. Chevrolet. You have to look close, but it does look like it's original. Impala. They're calling this class early collectibles. Somewhat confusing as to what, how these classes work. They probably would have been nicer to pick more descriptive names for the classes. A lot of American cars this year. This one's cool. Ram. You're not going to see very many of those. There's an Airflow. And an Austin America. And here's their Corvair class. This is the 60th anniversary of the Corvair coming out. So they're celebrating that at the Concours this year. Look at this Yanko Stinger. That is pretty rare. That 
is sure neat. Not a fan of the fake wire wheels. Yes, twenty-eight thousand at least. Right? Yeah. So, okay, so I'm gonna try. The side is I used to have a Corvair just like this one. Mine was black with a red interior. This is their Jaguar class. They were trying to do an evolution from the E-Type. We're starting here at the end. I'm surprised they don't have an F-Type there. We got some Jag XKSs. These are both factory convertibles. They don't have a Hess and Eisenhart conversion, which came out before the factory Jaguar convertibles. Several of these cars I know because I've worked on them. A big selection of E-types here. Is that Steve? Yeah. How you doing, man? Good. Anyway. A little confused as to why there's a Daimler Dart in this class. is a 39 Jaguar SS. This they're calling the Classics class. I heard that a few of these cars dropped out at the last minute. So they don't have as many here as they were hoping they would. Beautiful studs. This Mercedes is going up for sale in a state sale later this month. So LaSalle, beautiful BMW 327. Look at that Packard. That's quite a presence compared to these other cars. Here we have a couple featured cars. These don't fit into their own class. So apparently they drove this Crosley around on the roads picking up broken glass so that it wouldn't take out the tires of the cars when everything was being war rationed. Here we have a 1953 Maverick. This car was just shown at Amelia Island. It was finished up just this year. I think it did win some awards down there. It is a fiberglass body. It uses Cadillac and LaSalle parts. You could call this one of the early fiberglass sports cars, at least what the Americans considered to be a sports car. He's installed some modern gauges in there. You can see it's got a digital display now. So not exactly using original parts. The body is very smooth. They did a lot of work to get this fiberglass to look really nice. They would have made this well before the Ford Maverick came out. 
Of course, that name is coming back on a small pickup truck now. This is the very last International Scout that was ever produced. Must have a diesel engine. It's a very big winch on the front there. I'm guessing the pinstriping was not from the factory, but I could be wrong. Interior is pretty fancy. This one does have air conditioning as well. They have a Jaguar E-Type that is a featured car. This is also an Amelia Island winner. F-Type has arrived. I guess they decided not to park it in with the other Jaguars. This is supplied by the dealer. This is the F-Type R. Highway Hi-Fi record player. I heard play is now good. To the nearest train depot and assembled by the new owner before being driven home. That is amazing. And second place goes to a 1916 Cadillac Type 53 owned by Andy Flaggy of Mason City, Iowa. The model is stored by the owner, his father, and his grandfather over 30 years, just on nights and weekends. It's one of only four registered with the Cadillac Club of America. It sports a V8 engine, electric starter, eight-day clock, dual spare tires, and stow-and-go seats. Love that engine sound. There you go. <laughs> chitty chitty bang bang. Okay. <laughs> and the winner of our antiques class is a 1923 Brewster Model 02 town car owned by Mike Depp of Stillwater, Minnesota. Produced in New York between 1915 and 1925, these were rare cars back in their day. The current owner purchased it from a museum in 2019 and performed a significant mechanical overhaul resulting in a great running car today. And finally, let's see, preservation class is next, including automobiles for 1969 that have survived the decades with exterior, interior, mechanical components, functional and unaltered from the original material. And the winner of our early collectible class, 1934 DeSoto Airflow Coupe, owned by Fred Mayer of Cold Springs, Minnesota. The Airflow concept was initiated by Chrysler engineer Carl Breer along with the consultant of Orwell Wright. It was first aerodynamically tested in a design car, as you can see by the shape. Sadly, only 15 of these coupes survived. And the next class celebrates the Chevrolet Corvair 60th anniversary. If you remember, or maybe not, a compact car manufactured by Chevrolet between 1960 and 1969, it remains the only American designed mass produced passenger car with a rear mounted air cooled engine. We want to thank uh, to UBS Financial Services. And the winner of the Chevrolet Corvair 60th anniversary class is a 66 Chevrolet Corvair Yanko Stinger, owned by David Wetch of Van Meter, Iowa. This is one of approximately 125 cars made by automotive designer Don Yanko. It was raced in Europe and it returned to the States on the original RMS Queen Mary. He's out by the Maverick. And our next class is the Jaguar class. 
I'll pronounce it the American way. Grace, Faith, and Kate was the iconic And the winner of our Jaguar class of 1953, Jaguar XK120 FHC, owned by Russ and Mars Hughes of Indianola, Iowa. Jaguar produced only 12,000 of these between 1948 and 1954. This model is a fixed head coupe to satisfy the customer wanting more protection from the elements. All right, we have one more class, and I need three cars. <laughs> All right, we passenger limit originally cost $4,350. Only 650 examples were produced for domestic sale and 36 for import. Again, 1939 Buick Series 90 Limited. And the second place goes to the 1934 Packard 1107 5 passenger coupe owned by Don and Marlene Onstad of Valley, Nebraska. The V12 coupe is one of only a few equipped with rear tire mounts. Edward Bland's book, The Magnificent Packard 12, stated, quote, the intimacy of the five passenger coupe allows for a good family control over children. And the winner of our classics class is a 1939 BMW 327 8 Cabriolet owned by Tom Chandler of Elkader, Iowa. Designed to be a sporty for the well-to-do, this BMW-owned restored vehicle participates on vintage tours and concours across the country. Being one of 541 built is a smart and graceful way to drive. And now, the best of show. Time for the last award of the day. The judging team reviews all of the first place winners from the group and it selects the best of show. And the winner of the 2021 Des Moines Concours Best of Show is the 1934 DeSoto Airflow Coupe owned by Fred Bear of Cold Spring, Minnesota. She is a beauty. Congratulations. I hope you never see one again and here we see this one twice. So what did I know, right? We saw it. I saw it that way. Congratulations. A couple more comments. Thanks for uh, the show. Thanks for letting me see all these great cars. Have a great day. All right, hey. Uh, uh, my name is Aaron Cooper. I'm one of the, the co-chairs for today's event, so we'll be closing out with just one last. Uh, Congratulations! Second uh, in addition to our 120 cars, we also had a number of star cars today. Five special.